Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. Alias Season 1, thoughts. With the finale fresh in my mind, I'm going to start with that. I quite like how it parallels to the pilot with, you know, now we have Will being interrogated by suit and glasses, and he even gets to give suit and glasses some of it, a taste of his own medicine. You know, the Mueller device comes back just, you know, it's way bigger, and yeah, you know, we have, like, I think it's just two guys coming at Sid when she's dealing with the Mueller device. She, you know, deals with it by blowing them up. This whole, yeah. And, of course, great cliffhanger with, you know, what happened with Vaughn. You know, other than that he managed to communicate, not Penny's boat. And, yeah, we have, you know, we don't know exactly where it's going to go with Will. He knows the world now, you know, and he hugs Jack for saving him, and Jack is like, get off me. And... Dixon still, you know, we don't know exactly what he's going to I have watched the other seasons. I just, I don't remember every story beat. And I'm not going to spoil the other seasons in this video. Yeah, you know, what is Dixon going to do now that he is sure that Sydney is working for another agency? She's working, yeah, she's working against SD6, clearly, to some extent. And the... And of course, the, the really big, you know, but I thought, you know, I thought the man was the boss. Yes, but I'm not the man. And then you know, he walks out, in comes, yeah, you know, and, and clearly, you know, it's been almost 30 years. And, you know, mom? I like that Emily was brought, you know, more into the loop by Sloan and his, yeah, the, the whole thing that he went through with that. And I think I'm going to go more into that later in the video, but... Yeah, that he actually goes ahead and tells her, and that she, after that, finds that she still, you know, she, she trusts him. And his decisions in, in that, I suppose that more or less covers the finale. And, yeah, obviously, you know, suit and glasses is pure awesomeness. The I think it's you know they did really well at packing the finale. So much happens, so much is going on. You know, we have closure on Halatki, you know, that explains basically all the you know the, the risk he took by actually reporting Jack. And all of these, you know, the, the way he tries to get Vaughn away from Sydney, and yeah, everything relating to that, very nicely done. And Jack, again, you know, applies, you know, he's, he's good at solving problems. And I suppose... I do think that covers the finale entirely, yes. But yeah, compared to other episodes, you know, not, not every episode can have that much going on. It would be too much. 
but the the finale and the pilot both have a ton going on. And that does bring me nicely into the pilot. And my ex fiance pointed out that, you know, the, the pilot has a lot of tonal whiplash. And as JJ intended, it is very disorienting. And it really, you know, the, the show doesn't stay at that at that pace and with that exact style throughout but it does really tell you this is that kind of show like with lost there are going to be yeah a, a lot is going to happen and it it's going to juggle all of these different settings and elements and really you know sydney in yeah, Sydney and Danny, you know, just that specifically Sydney with Francie, Sydney with Will, the, you know, her at college, her on missions, and her finding out more than she knew, in part about her father and the, yeah, and and also you know, the, the CIA, although that remains fairly, you know, not a lot has changed about her relationship, you know, she hasn't learned a lot of new things about the CIA, although, you know, there's obviously a lot of growth in the Sidney Vaughan relationship, which, again, is introduced right there in the pilot. But, yeah, it jumps back and forth chronologically and mood-wise, and, yeah, it... it some people found that, you know, beyond frustrating, and yeah, then JJ is probably not for them. And this, you know, I like a lot of Lost, but the the last season and especially the finale itself just really, really frustrating. And I find Alias did far better, but yeah. And, yeah, other people really fell in love with the show for the pilot. And I suppose that more or less covers... I think JJ brings this up in his commentary track for the pilot. There are a lot of nice cuts where you think that the... You know, you hear the door opening and you don't know at that point that it's going to be suit and glasses coming in. But then it cuts and it's, I think, a, one of the college professors coming in or something through that, you know. And, yeah, it does really nicely at that. And I don't know about this. I've, I've heard that it's been done with Tarantino movies where people will cut it into a an actual chronological order and yeah it just loses the effect i've never watched one of these cuts i don't really particularly want to it there's there's reason why it's there, there's a reason that it's you know non-linear and yeah it would really take away from it and i think it would still be a strong pilot but it would definitely a lot of sort of the energy would be lost because when you just look at it, when you pick apart the pilot, there's a lot of setup. There's a lot that ultimately, yeah, it's it's there so that they can do things with it later on. Some of it even just, you know, in some of the very first episodes, but there's a limit to how much you can do when you're starting an overall story or several overall stories. You have to start by setting it up or it's just going to be way too much. So while we meet a lot of characters and there are hints of what might come, you know, you get a clear indication that Will uh, maybe wants to be more than a friend of Sydney, and yeah, the various relationships, not a lot is done in the pilot other than setting up 
for yeah and there's of course the awesomeness of Anna Espinosa Mo moving on from the pilot now and the I I love how they there's this real competitive thing going on between them where you know the when when they've both looked over the you know the the binary code or what appears to be binary if I recall it turns out to be something else but yeah you know they they both you know go over it and then immediately before running off they're like did you get it did you get it there's a yeah and the And I, I like to MST3K Dixon right after Sid's given all the numbers going. Could you repeat that like from the start? And yeah, just right from the the first time we see Anna, you know, we've got this. You know, she's she's ahead of Sid almost immediately and you know, Sid gets out of there fine, but yeah, and excuse me, they, you know, they they fight, and I like that she she fires the gun. I've, I've seen a number of reviews say, oh, why doesn't she have a gun? Where would you hide a gun in that dress she's wearing when they're in the, yeah, and she wasn't there to kill anyone. She didn't expect to have to kill anyone or even fire back. It was only because the operation didn't go entirely as planned. Which in part, you know, part of it is that Anna is there and then, you know, they also have some trouble with the keypad thing. But, yeah, they didn't really expect. And it's not like she can't fight back without a gun. But... Yeah, you know, she shoots at Anna, and she doesn't like, she could have killed her, but that's not what she's there for. And there's that strong implication that I could have just killed you. And also that she's that good of a shot, because she accomplishes exactly what she meant to by firing that gun. And then, I think it's the second time they meet, Sid is a little bit, you know, you know first you have the... the the last thing where they're, you know, Anna's, you know, greeting her, and then, you know, Sid passes Anna and greets her back, and she gets in and, you know, s slows down Anna with the, the door and that whole thing. So, yeah, Sid also gets to show that, you know, they, they are very evenly matched, and it's, yeah. You know, they they could, in, instead of just making this, you know, one of them always the underdog or something, yeah, it, it goes a little bit back and forth. And then, of course, Anna also, you know, attacks her. And again, she could have killed her, but instead Sin, Sid just falls a really long distance where you're like, if that didn't kill her, it should have broken every bone in her body. But of course not, because it's, you know, it's fiction, it's action fiction, and it's American action fiction. So, uh, yeah. But again, Anna could have just straight up killed her there, if that was what she wanted. But they have this, this game going on. And... My ex fiance raised the point that Sloan accepting Sydney back after the, you know, after they murdered her fiance and tried to murder her, you know, even bringing in the Mueller device, it's a lot to keep trusting her. And Sloan doesn't know at that point, and I'm not going to give away if he does learn it, but. He doesn't know that she's now a double agent. She, he doesn't know that she knows that SD6 is not CIA. Because he doesn't he doesn't know anything Jack did with Sydney in that time. And 
If not for Jack, she might not have, it might have taken her far longer to find out. Although she definitely managed to save her own life. I, I again, quite like that. You know, it could so easily have been he drives in and then he shoots the, you know, the guys. But no, she takes them out and she grabs the gun. If that hadn't been her father in that car, she could have killed him. You know, she's got the laser sight straight on his forehead, straight on his forehead. So, yeah. But, yeah, you know, why would he trust Sydney after that and, you know, and not figure that Jack and Sydney might just bail on him and, yeah, take down his operation, even from the inside? I feel like, to an extent, it maybe does suggest that Sloan trusts too much, that he can, you know, he can keep his, yeah, he's that he can control them, that he won't be betrayed. I think part of it is also that as long as Sydney is working for him, Jack, you know, he figures that Jack is going to play ball. And it's, you know, and, and we get this, you know, he claims that he just destroyed him to have to have Danny killed. And, you know, I'm not sure he says specifically about having attacked her, but... Yeah, that might also be that might be too strong of an indication that they're very much not CIA. That, but but yeah, and that is also I mean that's that's like one of those hallmark cards that needs to be made but just hasn't. I'm sorry I had spy, you know, hitmen try to assassinate you, but I'm not sure. You know, it's not entirely clear if he means if he genuinely didn't want to kill Danny, but I mean, certainly we don't see him really trying to talk him out, but yeah, as long as Sydney is working for him, Jack kind of has, to, you know, because he's got her as leverage, it's, you know, if Jack goes against him, yeah, that, you know, it's it might Sloan can take it out on his daughter. You know what what is that term Whip, whipping boy or something when you can't directly hurt the person you want to. You know, you can use someone else and it'll be you know the person you want to hurt's empathy for that person, and the and of course you know. Clearly, Sloan was willing to lose Sydney. You know, she, you got a month off. You, it's been three, so yeah, he genuinely thought that she might not come back, and that this is the way to make sure that, yeah, that that she doesn't cause any more trouble, that she doesn't tell anyone else or the like, and. I suppose I love the Tarantino two-parter, you know, where we find out what's in the box. You know, the we have the the very direct reference of McTiernan written on the van. And yeah, the the two-parter is very clearly inspired by Die Hard, of course. You know, you have an expert group using military equipment, including military weaponry, led by a slick, well-spoken man in a suit. They take over a secure building, making everyone inside a hostage as they try to steal something from the vault, demanding the code from the leader and, and you know, realizing that without that code, it will take longer. They use a special drill. They split up with their own assignments and, you know, skill sets and such. And they are fought from the inside by someone they didn't expect. You know, pigtails. 
and the you know that person indeed uses you know airments to get around it's, you know and there is a lot of CGI that might you know that 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 person has to you know disarm so that this you know these explosives don't go off because of actions taken by this this group and I love that Tarantino you know is or you know, Cole does amazing fighting and he actually the first time beats Sid and of course you know he then she then gets to do a rematch and she kicks you know she beats him you know because the the show really doesn't want Sydney to look weak at at any point but yeah the fact that he is such a good hand to hand fighter you know he was um you know very commonly used operative so it makes sense that he would be this good at it but we hadn't seen him use that before that and it's really clever kind of it makes sense but it's it's one of those things it could have gone wrong i tend to find that the the kind of twist where suddenly a person is really skilled at something that we hadn't really known them to be before that that can really often just not work at all you know it just it would have worked better if we had set up if it build if it would build to that instead but here we hadn't really thought about it but of course it makes sense it's not like this is just a guy they found to lead this operation this is the guy who had this entire yeah you know he he knew how to do it he knew SD6 and he was a an agent that they used a lot so of course he's a great fighter and it's also really good to have this attack on the home base you really don't expect there to be a yeah an attack on SD6 itself and this is the kind of episode that it's great to do that early on in part because it is a sort of, I mean, one episode after another, you see these characters infiltrate and get something from, you know, often these very secured locations. And, you know, at some point the audience is going to wonder, couldn't someone do that to them? And this, I feel doing it so early, you almost catch the audience off guard, even before we've really had a chance to form that thought because there's only been so many episodes so far so when it happens it takes us by surprise but it works we believe it because of that awesome you know sequence where they you know set to Dragula where yeah badass and again once you find out this is a guy who used to work there yeah he, he knows the you know Sloan didn't think it necessary to change because he thought that they, you know, he thought that Cole died. You know, he, he left him to die. Although Sloan, of course, feels that, you know, he, he, he Benry's under, the, you know, when, when, you know, that, that is a bit of a JJ thing, isn't it? It, you know, Sid does it in the pilot and, you know, Will doesn't, Will does it in the finale with the one and five, you know, kind of. So, well, yeah, that one doesn't quite work, but yeah, it's you know he he Benry's at Cole even with all this, you know, even with the the needles, it's yeah, and I love I think the needles really great build up, and it's clever to have this, you know, really terrifying torture device that and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to notice for the future seasons I like that in this most of the time when we see torture it's the bad guys using it you know Cole does it on Sloan and you know suit and glasses uses it and yeah just 
it really works then you know of course then there's also the jack does it in the finale to Haladki, but still most of the time it's the bad guys and yeah you know in spite of this being after 9-11 airing after at the very least and and a number of the stories you know they they have one direct reference to 9-11 in one of the episodes I'm I suppose I'm not entirely sure if the public knew excuse me about the use of torture at this point but you know they were in a hurry to start torturing so I'm pretty sure they already were and when when this you know aired but yeah the I, I yeah the the needles clever you know you you expect torture to be something bigger and something more like it's it's a fairly original I haven't really seen it anywhere else as a torture method and yeah it's like if you didn't have all that build up or if the build up didn't quite work but Tarantino is not the best actor ever but he does really well here and um, yeah it's the All the, the, you know, he starts even before, you know, long before the box is opened by talking about, you know, what's in this box. And then once he's opened it, he also has all these great analogies for how strong the effect is. And you really get this sense that, yeah, this is really going to hurt. And I mean, it's you know, and and yeah, Sloan Benry's in spite of that. So yeah, I feel like Charlie led to a lot of filler. The this kind of back and forth on whether or not he's cheating, and then after all this stuff, with you know, no, he he really wasn't cheating. It was the singing thing, and he he can't say I I love. Jen, Jen going, woo, Charlie, you know, that's, yeah, it's just adorable, but, yeah, the, the, you've got the, yeah, you know, suddenly it's, you know, after a little while, it's like, oh, no, it's a singing career, and he does, you know, he does sing really well, but then it's like, oh, he was with this other girl just a few months ago, and, yeah, it's just, you know, you're going to spend that much time. It also doesn't really go anywhere. I don't feel like if Charlie hadn't been part of the series, I believe it's episode two when, when Sid is moving in, you know, that's when we first meet him. Yeah, I feel like if Francie had been single from, you know, for this entire season, that would have been fine. He didn't really contribute anything, just this, you know, one story thread, which ended up being filler. You know, they went back and forth a little bit, and then at the end, he's just gone. I'm, we didn't even get an on-screen breakup, did we? After she knows that they're, you know, yeah, it's just, yeah, that was just, and it's, I hate when a character is literally defined by just this one thing. That was all he brought to that. That was the one story thing that there was with him. And a little bit in the on the same vein, we have Will mostly focusing on checking in, ch checking on you know, what happened with Danny and finding out about SD6. But with him, there are a number of interesting situations from it. And that there's this little, you know, this one in of, you know, this one guy who got screwed over by SD6 because they demanded to have his program. And, 
you know, we've got the, the guy himself, guy, the guy himself in prison. You've got his daughter. They didn't spend an awful lot of time on that, but as far as I understood, she was indeed safe. You know, once, you know, the, the lawyer took care of that. So, and then gradually he comes closer and closer, but then there's this little bit where he stops and then he comes back. I believe they they point this out on one of the commentary tracks. We don't find out who, you know, they, they refer to him as Deep Throat, I think. Yeah, the, the, the deep voice on the phone urging Will to go on. What we do know is that he was apparently ultimately working for the man. So, yeah. And that does make sense. That that was why he wanted Will to know. He wanted... Yeah, he, he wanted that... Yeah, he, he wanted to... The, the, the man wanted damage done to SD6 and possibly the CIA as well, you know, to, to help hurt the enemy, to help in hurting the enemy. And maybe, yeah, and, and perhaps genuinely trying to figure out some things. They didn't, you know, then at the end, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was the man that he must have been working for. They pretty much said at the end, didn't they? But, but yeah, and then at the end they straight up kidnap him and try to torture him for the information. Now, I think the, the very secrets related to Jack worked quite well here, that, you know, the... the yeah, she doesn't know a lot about him. And, you know, she didn't even know what his job was. Actually, I, I love that she feels for the face mask. You know, right before you know, because it's just it's a little outlandish. So so is really more than a little. And yeah, you know, at first it is just like you weren't there for me when I was younger. So you're gonna you you know, you and I are not father and daughter. We work together, but that's it. And you've got, you know, at, at first, let's see. I guess the first one is the, the idea that he might be KGB. Yeah, let's, let's, you know, let's, let's go with that one at least. Explore that one a little. The... Yeah, that she thinks that he may actually have been that because she doesn't know him that much and she has a rather low opinion of her. I, I love his introduction in the pilot as well, talking to Danny and yeah. But you've got the yeah she you know she tries to find out about the, the KGB thing and. That has her thinking that, you know, that her mother died because of him, because of him being a KGB agent. So not only did he betray the country, he got her mother killed. And, yeah, and then when you find out that, you know, it, I wasn't a KGB agent, your mother was, you know, and then it completely transforms how she views her mother. And the fact that he denied being KGB and that he hid, you know, the whole KGB connection from her was preserving her positive image, positive memory of her mother, you know, and we also later see, you know, who is it? Jack Bristol is a fool, you know, it was so easy for her to get all this information, so now he's extremely guarded, which you know, my ex fiance pointed out that is probably why he doesn't join her at the dinner. You know, he claims that he would, you know, be able to be there. And then he calls, and then we see him in the car there. So he could have been there. You know, there wasn't actually work. And then afterwards he says, you know, I, I'm really busy. So we should probably not make plans anytime soon. You know, he's worried that it's gonna that it's gonna hurt again, you know, and he also, 
goes somewhat back to, to drinking a little after he watches the video of her, you know, and the, and, and then we, we end up at, you know, the, the, yeah, then we've got the fact that she faked her death, you know, and we see Sid, you know, it's, it's the right way to do a clip show, you know, you, it's catching people up on what, it, it doesn't feel so much like, oh, remember this episode, remember that episode, it's adding detail to what we already knew, and there was plot there as well, you know, only like the middle portion is a clip show, and the, the last, the last third is new plot and brings about this revelation that she, yeah, you know, Sid faked it, and then Mom would have done that too. So, yeah, she's still alive. And then they realize, you know, she must be the the one the prophecy speaks of. And the and I, I do like that the show itself points out there have been millions of people who looked like this since Rambaldi's time. You know, this is not like she's the only one. It, they they don't go that route. I'm I'm glad that you know. I mean, it does. It seems like it might be her mother. I'm not thinking the way whether or not, but you know, Sid immediately points out, yeah, it looks like me, but it looks you know, mom looked like that at my age, and it's not like this is the only when when there are so many you know millions of people billions of people of course others have looked like her so yeah and the and and yeah and that suggests that it might be her and then they make sure to do the Mount Sabasio thing so that they can disprove that it's Sydney although I I agree that it's you know basically does disprove the you know if you if you're completely true to the the words in there, but then that it's just I agree that yeah I wouldn't be so sure that the you know. I don't remember exactly what age was that the FBI or was that one of the other one of the government agencies that they would be so quick to accept that you know that's just one detail of it that they wouldn't keep her for to find out more or the like and I suppose that covers the those secrets I like the kind of parallel between Snowman and Irina. That, yeah, it's it's like, you know, she really believed that Noah was telling the truth. You know, the the money and the thing. You know that he wasn't K director, but then it turns out that he was, and it just it really works that suddenly he's there and he's killed all these people and he kills Calder, I want to say, the, the FBI agent who also faked his death and we see, you know, him in the video. Very, very convenient that right in, you know, what, what does she watch? Minute two maybe of the video and then, whoops, he turns around and and nobody else noticed that because she's not the first one to watch the video, just yeah, I don't know. In my position, the moment that I see another face that could be identifiable, I would check into that. You know, when she actually says, oh, this is the guy, it's like, isn't he K directorate maybe? And something. Yeah, it's just, yeah, which is why the snowman kills him, I think. I, I think that's how it goes. And I do, of course, have to get into. Emily, I really like the the complication of her and Sydney still being very good friends. That you know she can't completely avoid Sloane, who of course also insists that oh, 
Sydney is like a daughter to me. Ugh. And just anytime the man smiles or just he's so evil, so just yeah. He yeah, she Sydney has to deal with that. You know, she doesn't want to just leave Emily's life, but she also can't say what bothers her. And then, you know, near the end we find out she does know about SD6 and she just doesn't realize that it's not CIA. But the fact that and and you know, they're in the finale when they drink wine, you have this sort of is he poisoning her? Because, you know, he's going to and and also this thing of no no, no it's what you thought was more pain it, you know you you entered remission you're very convenient for the but yeah that really spoils his plans that you know ah oh, just she she probably has a week left to live to so don't kill her and then you know they're like well as long as she's gonna die we don't have to speed them you know let nature take take its course and yeah then that and and he says you know. I demand to see it at the table and the you know we could we could bring her in but yeah the and I also got to love the the dinner with Sid Will Jack Sloan and Emily I believe those were all yeah yeah he didn't bring Will didn't bring, no, no, because Sydney was invited and she could bring a friend, so she brought Will, so Will didn't bring Jenny, but yeah, I also thought that was a little, that didn't really need to happen, you didn't really get anything out of the two of them having a relationship, but yeah, you know, these story threads that don't really lead to anything, just not that interesting, but Again, compare that to the the stuff with Sydney's mother turning out to be KGB and such. I'm not saying every story thread can be that, but just have it have it bring something like the snowman. You know that brings something in that. Yeah, although that again is somewhat related to yeah. But the fact that, yeah, the, the dinner and, you know, Emily and Will are talking about, you know, oh, he's so horrible, this this slave driver. And Sloan is like, what's so evil about him? You know, I bet I can out-evil him, you know, on my worst day. And, yeah, the, and, and you know, worried about, you know, Sid and Jack are like, will he... Or maybe it's just Jack. I don't remember if Sid knows it. But, but yeah, you know, will he recognize the eyes? And then he turns out, then, you know, he actually does. But although you got to be careful not to put too much trust on drawing like masks on, you know, over, you know, what's it called? Face shots of the people. And isn't that how George Clooney was cast as Batman? Or was it? Actually, it might have been Val Kilmer. I don't remember exactly, but yeah, Val Kilmer was pretty good. But Clooney was not. I love Clooney and everything else that I've seen him in. But yeah, the it's 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 a great little scene. Overall, the thing with Emily is she's she exists as someone that makes us feel a little bit more sympathy towards Sloan and a sort of, I mean, she is the cancer, basically. It's her, that's her entire character. Sick wife. You know, there's no other, I don't remember if they maybe do more with her later on. Again, I'm not going to go into that, but I, compare it to, of course, not quite fair, but Sydney. Sydney has more going on than the spy, you know, double agent thing. She also has Collins, she has friends. Emily purely exists to, yeah, to, to be this sick wife. And then, you know, you have the complication of, oh, she knows about SD6. And then, oh, she'll die soon, so it's okay. But no, then she won't actually die soon. And it's just... 
she's an obstacle for Sloan once we realize she knows and other than that it's just and also you know with the dinner you know the the wine you look pale you know you standing there looking at her and then it's like oh does he does he suspect and then it's just are, are you okay because you look a little you know but yeah the yeah she's she's mostly defined by her illness and that's it's it's the trope of the sick close family member I'm not saying that that trope can't be used to tell interesting stories and certainly this one does something that is rare it's I don't offhand know of another spy fiction where the yeah where the person genuinely is turns out to Yeah, you know, we're we're one of the sick rel where where there's a sick relative and then they know about the you know the the spy business and such. But overall yeah, that's that's pretty much what she exists as and I just think of it this way. She might as well not even be a character. It it would be the same basically if this was like a deteriorating toy that had like a recording mechanism and Sloan accidentally activated, you know, a, a toy that means the world to Sloan and, you know, maybe like, yeah, the Bobo, the, the bear, tuck at his fur. And yeah, you, you have the, yeah. And it had a recording device, and Sloan accidentally, you know, activated that. And when he was talking about SD6, and so the Alliance want to destroy this toy, and he's like, it's gonna deteriorate anyway. And then he finds out, nope, it actually just, you know, it was just shedding some, you know, second, second skin kind of thing. And you know, there we go. It's it's good as new. And then he's like, oh no, what what now? But yeah, she she might as well be a a deteriorating toy bear with a recording, and whenever you can, and more or less the same for Charlie. You know, he might as well be a teddy bear that Francie really cares about, and then, you know, it turns out that the teddy bear I don't know, it had been used for something, but you know maybe it was, she got it second hand, and it had been used for something that she just can't, you know, be. Um, deal with and that kind of, it's just not that interesting when you have a character for that kind of thing it anytime you introduce a, a sentient character it should mean more than that you know because yeah if you can if you can replace a character if you can remove something or replace something from your fiction then you probably should I've read other parts of this franchise the links are in the description box please comment thumbs up and subscribe for more content